had the opportunity to do start a little business and our bandmate suggested we start a music store because we were in Williamsburg, which was at that time very much on the outer perimeter of culture in New York City. It was kind of a post-industrial wasteland at that time in the mid to late 90s. Um, there was nothing like that here, but there were an increasing number of musicians because you could get a big loft space really cheaply um, and set up a recording studio or a practice studio or whatever. And that was 20 years ago now. My father was really into music, so that's how I got into music, I would say. And we always had tons of records around the house. I remember playing the grooves off of uh, the Harder They Come soundtrack that my parents had. And my other favorite record is probably The Grateful Dead, Blues for Allah, <laughs> when I was six or something like that. The first rolling synth I ever played with was probably a Juno 106. I know they had a Jupiter 6 at the local music store when that was a current production model. And that was like a fantasy to me. That was uh, like outer space. And I remember seeing Roland Synths being played by all the Brit pop bands that were big when I was a kid. Repair has always been a major part of what we do. Um, and Roland became a really big part of what we do um, basically through the repair side. There were so many musicians using vintage Roland gear um, from the moment we started. SH-101, Juno 106, Juno 60, Space Echo. Those have always been in heavy rotation in our community and, and the artists that we work with. So um, when we had the opportunity about two years ago to, to be a Roland dealer, we jumped at it because we saw the history and the heritage of Roland. And um, we had also seen, had gotten glimpses of the new stuff that was to come at that time. We jumped on it and we're very happy we did. It's the community we came out of. Um, there's always been a very strong artistic community in this part of Brooklyn. All the people that couldn't afford to or got pushed out of Manhattan in the mid 90s or just wanted more space than you could afford in Manhattan in the mid 90s, ended up here. And we had a small town vibe and you knew everybody um, and everybody has each other's back and all, we're still in contact with all those people even though some of them now play Madison Square Garden and such. That was sort of the foundation for what we did, that was the community. We've managed to grow during this period because service is such an important part of what we do. Forward-thinking manufacturers have realized that uh, brick and mortars that provide service are, are definitely an important part of the chain. People need to turn someplace when things don't go right. If we sell you something and there's a problem, we are here for you.